Hi, I'm Jose Anunciato, and you're watching the Web Dev Channel. Okay, so let's uh, go through a, a presentation here on the uh, on using uh, Redux with uh, React. Okay, and this is the the most trivial example I, I could come up with. All right, uh, and uh, I, th I think you'll be able to uh, capture it. Right? It's uh, it's it, I think in ten slides you'll 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 get the idea of Redux. Right, uh, everything else, right, will be you know how do you scale this idea? You know, how do you scale this very, very simple, trivial idea, right? How do you scale that you know, in, in large applications, which is non-trivial? Right? So the, the hard part will be uh, you know, extending this idea to large applications. Right? But the simplest idea, the simple, the trivial one, is, is to capture first what the essence, what the concept is. Right? So let's go over it. Go over. Uh, first of all, we'll, uh, let's, uh, let's uh, build a uh, little app where we can uh, play around with some, some of these uh, ideas. All right? Uh, so let's uh, create a React app, a trivial React Redux example. <laughs> right, so let's uh, make a directory uh, for lectures. And let's uh, create a trivial React Redux example. All right, so while that is uh, we'll, uh, de uh, deploying, uh, this is what we're going to be uh, building just, just in this first set of slides. Okay? Uh, basically, we're going to just have a, a trivial component right, that's uh, just going to have a single button. Right? So you can click on it, and something's going to happen. And what's going to happen here is that the component is going to dispatch uh, some events or some, uh, an action. Right? Uh, and uh, and a reducer right, is going to handle that uh, that action. Right? It's going to what it's going to do the reducer is that it's going to take the current state of the application, right? And depending on the action, it's going to generate a brand new state. It's not going to change the state. Right? The state of the application is going to stay uh, unchanged. It's unmutable. We say that the state is unmutable. Uh, instead, it's going to create a brand new state based on the previous state. And the action, uh, and it's going to store this, this, uh, this, all this, this state information in what is called a store. Okay, uh, if if you're familiar with a uh, model view controller, uh, you might use some analogies on what uh, some of the roles here are. Right, the, uh, uh, the 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 view. Well, that's the same, right? In both in model view controller, uh, and dispatcher is somewhat what you might uh, find to be a controller, right? That it's handling events and sending them over. Uh, to somebody who's going to handle these events, right, that's processing user user input uh, and updating and dispatching who, who it goes to. Uh, reducer is, um, is, is, is more or less a, what um, uh, what uh, the the model might be, right, or the manipulation of the model or the service, right, that's uh, that's taking this this data and is manipulating the the, the the data. But here we're not manipulating the state. Instead, we're creating a brand new one, right? uh, and then it's being stored in storage uh, for then uh, re-rendering. So let's focus first on this, on this pipeline, right? how to build this pipeline. Right? We'll then focus and say, okay, well, once uh, the state has been created, well, how do I display it? Right? How do I display this brand new state? We'll do that in the next couple of slides. So let's first look at the, this, this trivial example. Well, let's see, is this done? All right, so if we go to the trivial example and we do npm start, uh, this uh, uh, shoot boot boot up the, um, the default application. There it is. All right, so let's, uh, let's uh, open it up in our, um, in our favorite uh, IDE. Uh, so we are in uh, web dev lectures. Here it is. Let's open it up. All right. So what the first thing we're going to do is uh, blow away the content in that in that directory. All right. So we're not we're going to create our own implementation from scratch. It, all right. So so first of all, we'll need to install a couple of things. All right, we'll, we'll install two libraries, the Redux library. Right, that's the uh, base library that's the same for all frameworks. 
all frameworks, not only React, but all frameworks use just, just Redux. Right? Uh, again, Redux is not React specific. Uh, you can use it with jQuery, with Angular, with any other framework, you can use uh, Redux. And, and so we'll need to install a second library here that uh, loads uh, the uh, hooks to be able to have React talk to uh, use this uh, uh, Redux library. Okay. So let's uh, install uh, Redux. Don't forget the, the dash dash save. Uh, no, sorry. Copy. And uh, and then we'll install Redux React Redux. And meanwhile, we can uh, blow away the content here of the source directory. And then we can install uh, React Redux. OK, so that's uh, very good. So, uh, so I think we're ready to get started with the, uh, with the boilerplate content, right? First, uh, we'll load the, um, the React um, React and React DOM right, in, in an index file. So let's uh, create here the index. So this is index.js. And in here, let's uh, import both React and React DOM. Um, we don't need those just yet. Uh, but let's load it anyway, so I, before I forget. Okay, we don't need those just yet. Notice that they're not being used anywhere. That's why they're all grayed out. Uh, and um, and uh, let's see if we can create just a, a, a trivial component. <coughs> let's create a, a sum component. Notice that this is very, very generic. Right? Notice it says sum component, right? any component that you might want to create. And so let's, uh, let's add a, a, a brand new component. There it is. Sum component and presumably has this button that you click on it and it does something. Right. And let's uh, render it. We can say uh, React uh, DOM uh, render and uh, render uh, some component in uh, document uh, dot uh, get element by ID uh, and in root. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, re-render this. Uh, we need to start it. Oh, we didn't. We didn't. It's gonna. It's gonna complain. Oh no! There it is. Okay. There's a button. Uh, our button doesn't do anything yet. And if I click it, it'll probably complain. Yeah, it complained, right? Because it's not connected to anything, right? Uh, but let's uh, let's take a look at it, what it what it what it says, right? This says. So somebody is going to pass me. Somebody is going to pass me a dispatch um, argument, right? As a property, somebody's going to pass it to me. And we talked about parameterizing components before, right? Right. Uh, somebody's going to pass it to me. And when the button is clicked, right, it's going to uh, call that function, right? So notice you see the arrow function uh, saying an event is going to be generated when the click on click it uh, gets called. We're not going to use the event uh, for anything, right? but the, the argument, and that's a function in there, and it's going to call the dispatch function. It's going to pass a, some JSON object there. See that? Right. We call that JSON object an action. The object itself, we call it an action. And an action uh, has one single uh, required attribute, right? the type. That's the only required attribute of an action. Right? It allows it to so that we can uniquely identify one action from another action. Right? And presumably, there will be some descriptive text in there that presumably captures what it is the action that you want to do. And here is some action. Right? Uh, so notice that uh, uh, this won't work just yet. Uh, right now, uh, we could just do an alert, perhaps. We can say you know, alert uh, hello. Uh, oops. Oh, am I missing something? Uh, 
right, hello. All right, so if I click it, it just calls that, that function in there. Everybody okay? All right. Uh, but uh, what we want to do is call a this function dispatch, and instead we want to pass in some JSON object uh, that says a type. The type of the object to distinguish it from other objects is has some action. Yeah. Uh, all right. So so to to who's going to pass me this? Who's going to pass me that? Right. Redux is going to pass me that. Right? Redux as part of the framework is going to pass me that function. How does that? How does it pass it? Well, we have to connect it to Redux. Right, so how do we do that? Uh, is that we, uh, we say uh, we use the connect function, connect some component. Right? We, we say connect is part of the Redux React uh, framework. We say connect, and then you pass it as argument uh, several mappers, which we don't know what that is in a minute. We'll see what, what you can pass it as an argument. And that returns an op it returns a function uh, that you can then pass it the name of the component that you want to connect to. Okay, and so okay, so now it's connected. Um, uh, but uh, uh, before we connect it, we want to we want to uh, um, there's several configurations that we can add to it, and that would go in a in a parent container, which we don't have in a minute. Uh, we can we can put it inside of a an, a parent container. Right, and then just render that container. You can we can render that container. Right. Uh, so what's going to happen here is that that this this is going to generate the dispatch, right? It's going to generate this here. It's uh, the component view. When I click, it's going to generate. Right. The dispatch is going to generate the, uh, the 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 um, the the the, um, the action. And it's going to send that action to a reducer. Reducer is going to take that action. It's going to do something with it. All right. Uh, so we have that this first part right, of the component generating uh, or dispatching an action. Right. But we don't have anybody who's listening to it. Uh, so let's create the reducer that can listen to that. Let's create the reducer. So here's a reducer. And so let's uh, create a reducer right here. Uh, the const sum reducer is going to be a function. Uh, also, you'll notice that uh, I'm, make, I'm making heavy use of stateless components. Remember, remember yeah, uh, last week we said that there were two types of components that you could use, right? The stateful components, where it had constructors, it had a super, right? Uh, it has a this, that state, and you could put all the state inside of the component. And there was the stateless components. Remember that? All right? Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do, what we want to do, is that we don't want components to handle their own states. Uh, this, these are going to be very dumb components. Right? They're only going to render what they're told. Uh, somebody's going to pass them the state and say, hey, render this. Uh, you're not going to be responsible for maintaining your own state. Someone else is going to handle the state for you. And they're going to pass it to you whenever you need to render it. Right? It's no longer your role your responsibility of maintaining state. Instead, you notify the centralized uh, uh, state handler, right? And it, it will keep track of all the state for you, right? And that's that's exactly what's happening here. Uh, we we uh, we still have a ways to go, but this is notifying the state handler that something should happen to that state right? based on this action, whatever it is. We don't know what it is yet, okay? uh, and we we we're, we're we're trying to hook it up. Here's where we hooked it up, and it's going to handle it and send it over to this reducer. The reducer takes as argument the previous state right, and some action. And based on that state and the action, it will decide what new state should be. Right? The previous state might be that you have these widgets, right? this list of widgets, and the action might be delete a widget. And so the reducer, looking at the, at the uh, at the prior list of widgets and looking at the action to delete a widget, right? It will it will search that array, right? For the for the widget, it will generate a brand new list of widgets, okay? Without that widget that we're removing, it'll create a brand new object without that widget in there. Make sense? If the action would be to add a widget, it would take your old array of widgets and it'll create a brand new one. Uh, with 
the new widget added in there. Make sense? All right, so that's, that's a, the, the reducer has the responsibility of taking the old state, take, looking at the action, right, and then generating a brand new state. Okay. Uh, so so uh, the way this works is that the reducer is just one big switch statement. It looks at the action type, and based on the action type, it decides what to do. Right? Uh, if the type is um, some action, and that's exactly what we're passing. Notice that's what we're dispatching. See that? We're dispatching that. Uh, right now, let's just do something really, really dumb, and we're just going to do an alert. You know, some action was dispatched. Just to make sure that we were, we were getting here, okay, that that's hooked up. Right? Uh, and the other is that we're going to have a default. If none of the actions matched, well, I'm just going to return the old state. Right? No, nothing happened to a state. If, if none of the actions match, I'm just going to give you the same state that we were earlier. Right? I'm just going to return. I'm going to return the old state. Okay. Uh, if it matched the sum action, uh, I can return maybe a new a new state. I can say uh, return, and the new state is whatever I want it to be, whatever it, it, I, I care. So I can I can add some uh, new uh, attribute. Uh, with some uh, new state. And that has some meaning to me, whatever that means. Right? Reducer doesn't care. Uh, you generate this, whatever logic you were using to generate this state, all, all power to you. Okay? Uh, all right. Um, also, it might, it, it's uh, uh, often useful uh, to initialize the state with something, right? some default initial state. For instance, it, it might be that when I'm going to render this, my initial state might be the default list of widgets that is already in the database. That might be a good place to start. Right? I might go to the database, return the current list of widgets, and this would be my initial state. Yes? Right? Or my default state. If I don't have a state, this is my default state. So this might be, um, uh, this might be uh, some default attribute with some default state. Okay? Again, this is all something that means to me in my logic. All right, so I have a state, I have a default state, I have a reducer, and that's it. Let's see. Let's see what where am I missing? I might I might have broken something. Um, all right, now we have now we have uh, these pieces here. We have the component generate dispatching some action, reducer handling that dis dispatch, generating a brand new state. Now we need to put it in the store, right? ready to be rendered, although we can't render it just yet. Uh, we have to create the store. The store is listening to what's happening at the reducer. Now it's going to take the reducer, and based on the state that the reducer generates, it's going to populate the, the store for us. Uh, so let's do that. Let's. Um, Let's see, let's uh, create the store. We'll create a new store, some store. I'm doing it very, very generic. Um, I guess this should have been, okay, here's the container. There's my store taken from the reducer. Uh, and then we, now that we have a store, we have to provide that store to the app. Right, which is currently the app is made up of just a container. Okay. Uh, so we can um, we can feed this with the provider provider. We need to provide our app with a store and provide it to the child component. Okay. All right. Uh, this is a lot of plumbing. Right, this, this is just a lot of plumbing. Just have to fit all the things together, right, and connect them. All right. Once it's plumbed, right, then then you don't have to do this ever again. Right, this is the tedious part of this: is, is setting up the plumbing. Right. After after the setup, you can just you know just concentrate on the actions and how the state is generated, and what the logic is, and whatnot. That's the that's the fun part, right? The boring part is is setting up the plumbing, right? Uh, but again, that's and that's a uh, usually where things go wrong at the beginning, where where these kinds of things. Um, 
Actually, here we are. We are uh, instead of. Okay, I guess, I guess this this should work. Uh, let's see. Um, let's see. Is it complaining about anything? Okay, there it is. Notice that I clicked on the button, and we're hitting that alert. All right? See that? So we are in the reducer. We are in the reducer. Okay, when the reducer just uh, received that the dispatch, right? It went into that case. Right, and did the alert, and it's now returning some dummy uh, new state, which we're not doing anything with it. Right, it's returning that new state, and it's putting it in the store. Right, but we're never doing anything with that with that element in that store. Right, so so the next part might be, well, what do you do with the next, with that new state? Right, uh, presumably that new state you want to render it somewhere. Okay, uh, so let's see how we could do that uh, next. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe, like the video, and share it. Thanks.